objects are extremely important when it comes to programming, especially when you start to realize that there are some seriously complex applications out there that you may want to build someday, but their complexity is based on simplicity, which is objects. Objects have stumbled a lot of people, but they are very, very simple. So let's start out with the real basics. Your program can only contain nouns, adjectives, and verbs. That's it. Programming is very simple. Nouns are descriptive. So take a look around you. You live in an object-oriented world. And each object has its own properties or nouns. These describe the object. So I'll take an apple, for example. So we have the nouns such as the width, height, color, and weight. These are nouns, but they're not good enough to describe the entire object. You also need the adjectives as well, such as the string red. So when we combine the adjective red with the noun color, we know that now we have a red apple. These key and value pairs or nouns and adjectives are called properties. Next, you have verbs. Verbs are performing an action, which is a function. That's exactly what a function is. So you have nouns, which is descriptive and verbs, which are functions and functions like verbs, for example, could be eating the apple. That's a verb. Also, I could throw the apple. That's a physical action. So again, it's a verb. So verbs are functions. Now, when a function is within an object, it's still a function, but we give it a different name. We call it a method. That's it. So when we say method, it simply means a function that is contained within an object. That's it. That's how easy an object really is. So to give this some perspective, what I want you to do is think of, let's say, creating a graphics editor, a lot like Photoshop. I have a canvas and on that canvas, I can have several images. Let's say I have three images in total on the canvas. Now, what we have is three objects on the canvas, three images. And for each image, I have the X and Y coordinate where the image is placed. Then I have the width and the height of the image. And I also have the image data itself. So now that we have all of this data and it's correlated together, all of these properties are encapsulated, put together, I have each object which resembles each image. Now let's imagine that objects didn't exist in programming, which is just impossible. But let's say they didn't. How could I then group this data together? The simple answer is I couldn't. So for each object, all of those properties will be let loose. How do I know which property, which noun describes which image? The simple answer is I don't. That's why objects are so important because they allow you to group information together that relate to certain aspects of your program. That's why it's important. Now to really get this object orientation in your mind, what you need to do is think about this in everyday life. Look around you. Look at all the objects you have. Just look at your computer. Take a look at the width, the height, the color, the size of the keyboard, the trackpad type, so on and so forth. Again, this is all very, very important. And then look at what you can do with the computer. I can type. I can smash the computer, which normally that's uh, under angry. And then on top of that, you also have a whole host of other verbs that you could do to your computer. So that's the whole idea is the fact that when you group data together, it becomes so paramount how important objects really are. And if you don't understand objects, you will not understand any programming language. It doesn't matter what it is. Now to really ingrain this into your mind, apply it to your everyday life. Just visually think of those braces and adding in the properties and methods of each object you come in contact with. For example, you wake up in the morning, you go ahead and get the milk out of the fridge. So I'm going to picture the fridge. I'm going to open my curly brackets. And then within there, I'm going to take a look at a few nouns that describe this fridge. So it could be the make of the fridge, the size of the fridge, and so on and so forth. 
Then on top of that, I'm opening the fridge door. That's a verb. That's something that I'm doing to that object. Therefore, I'm running a method on that object. I'm opening that fridge door. If you keep thinking like this in your everyday life, I guarantee you object orientation becomes a breeze. Now the next level is embedded objects. So we've already established that objects are very, very simple, but objects can contain objects. Just like in everyday life, objects do contain objects. Again, think of your computer that sat right in front of you. Well, it's not just made up of one object. It's not just classed as one object. You may have a camera in your computer. You have a screen, you have a keyboard, you have the trackpad, each of which have their own nouns and verbs associated with each component in your computer. And you can break it down and down and down and down and go as complex as you would like. But then what I need to do is encapsulate all of those objects and components together into one object. So here you can see it's all encapsulated into one object. So this right here is a hierarchy of objects. We're establishing an order of objects. We have the sub objects and the main parent object. And when you think of something like a car engine and all the components of a car engine, again, you can go into some serious depth with your objects. So we've understood one, encapsulation. Encapsulation is grouping data together, whether it be nouns and verbs or both. And if you really want to remember encapsulation, just think of a capsule that contains many chemicals and so forth that you stick in your gob and swallow. Then we have nouns and adjectives which describe the object and verbs which are actions performed on that object. And finally, objects can contain other objects. Now, if you understand all of this, you will understand objects. And if you apply this knowledge in your everyday life, then objects will become more clearer to you as a programmer.